In the previous video, we were analyzing this circuit using the nodal uh, analysis technique. And we realized that here is one node in the upper part of the circuit. And here was a second node. And there's a third node that's down here. And that's grounded. And this node, we said, let's say that's at a potential V1 and that the second node is at a potential V2. And we wanted to determine what was V1 and V2. And at the end, very end of the video, we determined that V1 is 37.81 volts. Now we want to determine what is V2. Then once we have that knowledge in hand, we can determine the current through each one of these resistors in the circuit. Let's go back and let's quickly find out what V2 is equal to. So here, to determine V2, we go back to our column of numbers here, here, and here. And now we're going to form this determinant where this column, the V2 column, is replaced by this column. So V2, this stays the same. So we have 3 eighths, make a little more room here. three-eighths and minus one-fourth and then replace this column with this column six two and that gets divided by eleven over sixty or one hundred sixty and remember for this determinant here we had the coefficients of V1 lined up in a nice column, and the same thing for V2. And then we take these two columns, form, in this case, a 2 by 2 determinant, and determine its numerical value. And that's used both to determine V1 and V2, because each time it appears down here in the denominator. So let's see, what is V2? This will be equal to. Here we have 2 times 3 eighths, so that would be 6 eighths, or that's 3 fourths. And here we have minus negative 6 fourths, or that would be plus 6 fourths, divided by 11 over 160. So here, this is 9 fourths times 160 divided by 11. And this, that's 40. So we have V2 Voltage V2, that equals 9 times 40. That's 360 divided by 11. And put it on the calculator. And we have, that's about 32.7. Let's run that off to 32.72. So now, we know what V2 is. That's 32.72. Now we want to do is determine the current through the resistors here. So let's proceed like this.
Okay, now remember when we were setting up the problem, and we were saying, well, this is node 1, this is node 2, and we know for sure there's two amps flowing out of node 1, and here we know for sure there's two amps flowing in to node 2. The unknown currents in each case we assumed were flowing away from node 1. So we were assuming, for example, that there was a current going like this in this direction through resistor R1. But now that we have determined what these voltages are, we can see that that's not going to happen like this. This is the wrong direction. Because here, this is at a positive potential of 64 volts, pushing the current in this direction. This is at a positive potential of 37.81 volts. So this one is going to win the tug of war. So the current goes through like this. It goes upward through resistor R1 into node 1. And let's see, that current would be equal to then It would be 64 volts minus this. We have 64 minus 37.81. That's the net voltage drop divided by the amount of resistance. And I think that comes out to approximately 3.27 amps. And again, that's flowing upward. Okay, and again, now when we were setting the problem up, and we were working with node 1 and node 2, and considering the Kirchhoff current equations for each one, in each case we assume that for the unknown currents, that would be the current going across this resistor, that it was flowing away from node 1. But now when we work with node 2, for this unknown current, we were assuming that it was flowing away from node 2 in this direction. Clearly it can't be both of them, but now we know which one, now we know the, the direction because this is at a positive potential of 37.81 volts. This is at 32.72 volts. So the current in actuality is going to be in that direction and the magnitude of this current will be this minus this divided by the resistance. So we have 37.81 minus 32.72 and that's divided by 4 and put that on the calculator and I think it's like 1.27 amps and that's going to the right. So that's 1.27 amps flowing through that resistor in this direction. Here it's 3.27 amps going upward. Now for this resistor then this is at zero potential this is 32.72, so for this resistor it's going down obviously, the current, and it will be equal to that voltage divided by 10, so that will be 3.27 amps going down. So that's it, that's the entire circuit. And again, um, hopefully you've watched the, the previous video, and you'll see that when we were setting it up, we identified the nodes. There's three of them, but one of them is the reference node, because that's grounded. Then we had the two nodes up here, so we had two sets of Kirchhoff current equations to set up. Each one of them had a value of V1 and V2 expressed in it, so there's two equations, 
two unknowns, then once we could solve for v1 and v2, then without much problem at all, we could determine the currents and the directions of the currents for each one of these resistors. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, come back, join us for the next video, and we're going to consider a more streamlined approach in how to uh, conduct nodal analysis that can definitely uh, make the problem easier to handle. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll try and solve some more problems.